Joining me is Rakesh Om Prakash Mehra, filmmaker, and uh, you know, till date I've interviewed him as a filmmaker, but today is a different interview. He is the author of his autobiography. This is the cover. Um, it's a beautiful cover. It says "The Stranger in the Mirror." Uh, why is it called that? What does it have? He's here, right here, to talk about it. Firstly, how are you doing uh, post the success of Tufan? Uh, yeah, it's been a pretty interesting month, right? right. Uh, uh, with the release of Tufan, and it got released on 16th of July. You know that we spoke yes. about it. Yes. And uh, the love that is pouring from all across is uh, very overwhelming. It, I must admit, and uh, the, the the difference has been like uh, you know uh, earlier you would get uh, reactions from the critics and and from the trade and then from the audiences, mm -hmm. uh, which is happening in this case also. Okay, but it is much more broad based. It's it's yeah. like you're getting it from the south of India, from east of India, from the world at large, from London, from New York, even from France today, I got some uh, wow. uh, uh, messages from, uh, from uh, a, a very senior person who's in the entertainment business there. Okay. And they caught the film, uh, agents in LA, they saw the film, they've liked it. So all in all, uh, it's been, um, a lovely journey yeah so and the big carried... difference is the big difference is the reach am i right like you know when it releases on ott this is on amazon prime video the big difference is the reach that everybody can see it at the click of a button tell me about it absolutely right uh we did i've been speaking about the reach earlier and mm. if you remember when we yes. spoke earlier yes. i said it's going to 200 countries yeah. 240 territories it will go into millions of households at the same time. But I was really not ready for that mm -hmm. the reach is so wide. So right. it's, it's, yeah, it's, it's nice. Yeah. Right. And you know, but but having having seen the other side and big big screen experiences also, do you are you missing the charm a little bit of going to the theaters, Getty Galaxy? You know, so are you missing that a bit little bit? Ah, uh, who isn't? Yeah. Isn't. Tell me about <laughs> it. And not just for Tufan. That will be like uh, belittling the idea of theater and a cinematic experience. For all your favorite films you want to see and uh, you want to see them on the last screen. Absolutely. Having said that, uh, the debate versus services, the OTT platform and mm -hmm. the theater. Mm -hmm. I, I think that uh, jinx is behind us with Tufan. Yes. At least, at yeah. least for me. Hmm. Right. That is so important, right? Because this is this is a hot topic. Whoever will come will ask you, what do you prefer out of these two? <laughs> yeah. So they're apples and oranges. Both are good. Can't compare. Yeah. yeah. Right. And then you time the did you time your book in such a way that let's get done with this. Uh, let's uh, let Tufan release. Let me be free. To talk about my autobiography, there was it timed in a way like that? Uh, uh, not very precisely, not like a very uh, uh, scientific planning as such. <laughs> okay. But we were uh, we had planned the book for the summers, mm -hmm. which is now, mm -hmm. and in fact we were planning to bring it earlier in July. Okay. But then the fun was releasing, so I requested the publisher. Because earlier Tufan was releasing on May 21st. Yeah. So we, we said, let's, we'll give it two, three months and then come out with the book. So, you know, at least in your mind space, you are done with something and entering something else. Right. And, uh, but as it turned, uh, kind of panned out, uh, they're both happening at the same month and it's amazing. Right. Uh, you know, uh, decision of writing an autobiography, I don't know, for different, it's different people. Um, uh, how did you decide that, okay, this is the time I should say, or maybe Rakesh, we have loved your films, but maybe your best work is still ahead. So we don't know. Uh, how did you decide that, okay, but let's, let's get this much out. I, 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 fingers crossed. I, I hope and I, and I will work hard towards the fact that, uh, the best is yet to come. Right. And, and and would want to believe that. Right. Uh, how it came about is 
it was organic it, okay. it wasn't uh, like ki chalo abhi autobiography likhte hain acha so yeah, i i wanted to share more about uh, the movies which i had mm-hmm. made Mm-hmm. Uh, so far, there was one book released on uh, the films I made on Rangde Basanti. Yes, and it was the shooting screenplay. But at large, I wanted to share, especially with the younger filmmakers and the ones who want to enter the field, the whole process that goes behind it. Okay, uh, and also the ups and downs, the struggles, the heartaches, the joys, the <laughs> pain, <laughs> everything. Right, and. Uh, because uh, it's uh, i've got a lot of happiness making films yeah and and received a lot of love and uh, whether the journey was smooth or uh, smooth sailing or whether it was choppy water that's not important uh, but the process was very interesting and that right. process i wanted to share and as i started speaking about my films what came out was the i've drawn a lot from my life in my films so whether it was delhi six which was my childhood days mm-hmm. whether it's rangde basanti which is my college days yeah uh, in fact the five friends in rangde basanti are the five friends we are in college wow okay. and and we are still very close to each other right and and i borrowed from their characters mm-hmm. and gave them to you know amir khan's character okay. kunal's character atul's character mm-hmm. siddharth's character sharman's character right uh sohar's character hmm so uh I, as i spoke about the movies i also spoke more about my life experience so my right. co-author uh, rita gupta yes who who is a co-author of the autobiography is also uh, he just the way it kind of uh grew uh it 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 only became very natural that ki uh, uh, your life and movies don't the line is blurred they're not two mm-hmm. different things yeah so let's just uh, combine it all together yeah so so you know anyone who picks up this book be they be they studying movies or something will they get anecdotes from while you were making say rangde basanti loads and loads of them. amazing that's you know, right you know, by uh, talking about that film there for many of us that continues to be our favorite rakesh om prakash mehra movie uh, for many reasons um, you made it for a reason that time i remember even chatting with you that time uh, that was made because you believed in something the idea the concept of it and also the atmosphere around um, today do you see a rangde basanti being made uh, i uh, not the same movie Uh, oh, yes. but in spirit yes most certainly uh i i, I don't see why not and uh, because every generation will have uh, uh you know their aspirations okay and every generation will have uh, their voice rangde right. basanti was about was about a voice it had yes. a very strong voice and mm-hmm. uh, uh an expression mm. and that i was at that point of time dying to bring it out so i'm yeah. sure each generation uh, will have things they really want to say right uh, it was a socio political drama yes and there is uh, we cannot separate our lives from uh, the social we are all social animals yes yeah you know and and uh, from uh, those kind of subjects and they happen all the time all around the world right so you you say it can be made beat whatever atmosphere we are living in now or later 100% 100% i i there be also think we have uh atmosphere is there hmm uh at any given time okay whether there was an atmosphere in 1947 yeah uh whether it was monto writing about partition uh you know whether it was uh, something done during emergency mm-hmm. uh uh especially journalist i must say uh, mm-hmm. and uh, whether it's today's time and whether it's tomorrow right so there will always be a voice and uh, if you're in the field of art art is only going to mirror what's going out in in real life 
it's yes, whether consciously or subconsciously right will you attempt something on those lines uh 100% percent. Wow. matlab that's uh, you've just seen tufan yes and and tufan is about healing it's yeah. it's about it's a film about love it's a film about it's a story about uh, my reason for doing the film prima facie was and i still remember uh, when i heard the story idea and anjum was in the room and later on uh, uh vijay maurya joined the mm-hmm. the writing process mm-hmm. my only reaction i very very clearly remember i said farhan there are so many wounds in the society at large and if we can put a soothing balm on it let's do that wow nice. and for me that was so fun yeah right and you know i had not seen it uh, when i interviewed you but uh, now i can you know what you're saying is there were so many things that you showed which are happening in the society in the society especially in the second half when parish rahul's character completely turns uh, you know and he uh, so you see another personality of the same man who was teaching this muslim boxer and he he uses words like love jihad he says uh, this is not allowed you have entered my house um all these were things that you saw around absolutely so those are the kind of conversations which happen on the dinner table absolutely. in every household today right yeah uh, sometime or the other every day once a week once a month mm-hmm. uh in colleges in cafes in your at your workplace mm-hmm. uh Uh, on uh, on social messaging right so that uh, has to influence a filmmaker and a storyteller right if if i am not getting influenced by it then either there can be a couple of reasons either i am living in a la la land <laughs> mm. and i am not in touch with what's happening around me right or my subject is not set in today's time you know it's set in the past or it's set in the future Mm-hmm. so it need not reflect even if it is set in the future right it will be a domino effect of today's time right okay jaisa hum abhi beej boenge aisa hi to baad mein payenge ji 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 you know it's incredible that you're saying you know um like a creative person will always follow his heart and also without fear continue to make movies now or many years later that's incredible so So you know, Rakesh, we're talking about the making of Rangde Basanti since you know it continues to be our favorite. Um, I promise you, this is the last question on Rangde Basanti. That, no, no, um, please, Kari. <laughs> right, you know, you know that 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 film could have you know parallel with Bhagat Singh's story. You know, uh, that could have gone drastically wrong also if it was not placed and you know the narration was not going in a flow. Uh, how did you have managed to pull it the way you all did because it was incredibly stitched together and you just see two films in one actually um there is a lot in the book right now <laughs> about that <laughs> right, uh, right. in fact uh, um, there is a chapter on rangde basanti there is a chapter before the making of rangde basanti the struggle it took us to make that film. okay to even get it on the floor <laughs> and then there is a chapter on what the media then termed it as the rdb rdb effect the right. rangde basanti effect you yes. know they called the movie that became a movement yeah and how it influenced the jessica lal case yes. the priyadarshi mattu case yes mattu case it it there was a talk in the parliament about the film by the then home minister and how they reversed a judgment Mm-hmm. I'm not saying that it was because of Rangde Basant, but, but it was somewhere, a topic, right? Yeah, topic, some kind Influence. of influence. It was a catalyst, an influencer. It it brought kind of a, a the tagline was a generation awakens, and a generation did awake. Right. True. Uh, uh, as such, uh, there's a lovely epilogue in a book. The 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 foreword is by A. R. Rahman. A. R. Rahman. and the epilogue is by amir khan amir khan right so amir has captured that beautifully the what you asking right okay, uh, okay. Uh, yeah yeah uh, because i was associated with him and we collaborated on rangde basanti right so uh it's it's his on a beautiful piece and it, it's very funny but okay. <laughs> but but it's is it, very loving also he poured out his heart and uh, then there are anecdotes of madhavan 
by atul kulkarni uh, definitely rehman is there and then by voices from normal people so all that is there in the book yeah. right great and also you know it's tough to convince amir khan to do a film and you know he did this so convincingly you have one team um, anything that you remember uh, there was anyone apprehensive that this will work may work may not work any apprehensions in any meetings of yours uh <laughs> no I, when we get into a film and especially if you get into a film with uh amir khan right it then you're making the film right uh, then you're putting a head down and we are not thinking about whether it will be a success or a failure mm. what will be the consequences jute padenge ki haar milenge ji wo us us time you're doing uh putting your best foot forward doing things to the mm-hmm. best of your ability right as such so uh, uh there's a lovely anecdote i don't know if that's in the book or not uh so uh amir plays the character of dj in right. in rangde basanti right and so i had sent him a message mm-hmm. and um, it was a one line brief for his character Mm-hmm. which was ki zindagi jeene ke do hi tarike hote hain amir ek jo ho raha hai use hone do ya fir zimmedari uthao use badalne ki and this is the character graph of dj and the boys right. so we started uh, uh, getting the film together pre production and uh, but some of the uh, the money was coming and not coming and there was a uh, lot of struggle uh, you know the the earlier, earlier producers did not perform mm-hmm. all that happened uh ab ye film banegi ki nahi banegi wo sab chal raha tha and everybody was hanging around and day, twice the shooting was planned and got cancelled right so one of the days i was feeling really low and okay. i said yaar what the hell mai film hi nahi banaunga life mein <laughs> तभी ये मेरे को नहीं करना है अगर ऐसे करना है तो तो आमिर का मैसेज आया पिंग एनी सेंड मी बैक मेरा जिंदगी जीने के दो ही तरीके होते हैं <laughs> तो उसने मेरी लाइन मेरे को वापस मारी तो एंड विच वॉज वेरी इंस्पायरिंग एंड यू नो सो ऑल दिस सो रंगे पसंद थी वॉज प्योरली वॉज सच अ टीम वर्क राइट एंड आमिर वॉज डेफिनेटली वन ऑफ द स्ट्रॉन्गेस्ट पिलर देर Right, so I was the, just going through what you said. Yeah, he sent you that line. It is incredible. It's in the book, and uh, I think that anecdote that you're saying is there beautifully mm-hmm. timed. I have to say by him. <laughs> right, yep. uh, because this has come close to Tufan. Do you think this book will have more about a lot about Tufan as well? More influence about your recent release? Uh, Rohit, uh, uh, it it does not have a chapter on Tufan. Okay. For the for the simple reason, the book was finished. couple Finished of months matter. back okay okay by which time the proofreading was happening okay. you know everything was getting together okay so uh, uh, i i hope i can follow it up yeah. with uh, i i must do a the sports trilogy which has yes. a background of sports amazing and then i yes. and then i can do a book on all on all. athletic on athletics boxing and who knows what right so we can safely say rakhi that this is not your uh, this is not a typical autobiography this has a lot of anecdotes which we people can learn and understand about the movies they've loved but it's not just your life story from your childhood till now that's not what it is right not at all it's okay. it's a journey it's a journey okay and uh, obviously the journey starts with the uh, the home i was born in yeah. and i was very lucky to be born in uh the parents i have so there are chapters on my parents wow. my sister my brother uh it it shifts to my school days my mm-hmm. college my friends my chaddi yards right uh their stories their anecdotes their photographs right uh and uh, and then it goes on to my advertising days yeah which I is this, this which is this picture i'll show i'll show the viewers this one picture which is a you have to see this and tell us where this was taken and what i card is this <laughs> <laughs> this was my uh, uh my first job in advertising in 1986 in ulka advertising delhi ulka advertising right yeah if, if i i'm all clean shaven 
yes wearing a tie and yeah i'm <laughs> trying to look good but i failed at that <laughs> not at all <laughs> Right on, sir. So you have shared a lot of pictures. I can see a picture. This is with Pralad, of course, from your ad days, right? Yeah, that's from advertising days. Pralad okay. was instrumental in me coming to Bombay. In you coming uh, to shifting here? Yeah, I, I I was a Delhi boy working in Ulka advertising, and Pralad came to shoot uh, uh, four ad films for us. Okay. Uh, this hot shot director. Yeah. The most wanted director. Flamboyant. Uh, uh, oh, flamboyant. That's an understatement. <laughs> <laughs> uh, most outspoken point of view. Uh, you know, uh, all that. And uh, the only thing was, Pralad didn't have time. So okay, I, right. I, I hunted him down, and I said, Pralad, you have to make this film. I was a young kid from Delhi, and so he said, I have no time. Come after six months. I said, No, you have to. We are launching the bike now. In okay. April, so we need the film, and this you're talking in Feb March. Oh. So, uh, so I said, and this is the script, and you come and shoot. Um, he said, my production crew is all. I said, I'll do production. I didn't know the P of production. <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> I said, don't worry, I'll handle all the production. He said, yeah, okay, your funeral. So uh, these are the script, these are the requirements. So I went back to Delhi and tried to understand what a film production was, that film oh, production. Wow. But somehow we managed it. On day one of the shooting, I still remember clearly, it was mm -hmm. a five-day shoot in mm -hmm. Delhi. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, in fact, it was uh, Salman Khan's first uh, appearance on front of camera. Oh, wow. Uh, yeah, he was the model for it. And... Uh, Pralat came and we had the locations. We were shooting in Bharti Mines in Meroli near Delhi. Mm -hmm. uh, and he took the bike for a joyride. And then mm -hmm. he didn't come back for 10 minutes, 15 <laughs> minutes, half an hour. I said, he said, he's going to go back to Bombay. Why are you not coming? I don't know. So everybody went looking for Pralat. And then he came back in a van and just uh, looked out and said, guys, you carry on shooting. I'm going. He said, what happened? <laughs> he, he took the bike for a ride. The bike had slipped. He broke his hand, dislocated oh. his shoulder, and was bedridden uh, in, in, a, uh, oh in, in, a, in a guest house when we went and saw him later. He said, oh, God, this shooting ka pack up. Ho gaya. <laughs> Director is <laughs> hospitalized. <laughs> so those days, uh, fortunately, a video assist had come. You know, you could record yeah. the output from the camera on a video. Okay. Uh, for your record. Right. to sub digital, everything yes. gets recorded. Yes. But we right. used to shoot on film. Yeah. So I said there are like two choices out here. One is to wrap up the shoot, and when Pralad is better, hmm. to resume the shoot after hmm. a week, fifteen okay. days, okay. whenever. Other is we have. I have to deliver the film. So I told Pralad, no problem. Mm -hmm. You tell us kya kya shot lena. We'll shoot it in the day's time. We'll and every evening we will show you. <laughs> he said, okay, go for it. Wow. And he had a lovely cameraman in Vikas Shivaraman. You all actually yeah. did a virtual shoot back in the days before we started all this virtual. <laughs> <laughs> virtual, but not online virtual. Right, so we, right. would, we would shoot, come back to him. And him. he would say, uh, like uh, we've completely wasted the footage and we don't know how to shoot. <laughs> but yes, I can use one shot out of these 20 shots you've done. Oh my and God. tomorrow, don't do this and shoot this again. So wow. we kept doing that for five days. And some of the films got ready. He Amazing. Came back. What a story. Good, good. Uh, before uh, Salman's first and not <laughs> now. <laughs> uh, so Pralad came back after 30 days to present the films. Okay. And then obviously we were late to drop him at the airport and there was traffic jam. So I told him to sit on my bike and I rode zigzag, zigzag, Delhi traffic, airport wow. and I said, okay, 15 minutes to the plane, go. Here's your boarding <laughs> pass. Somebody was waiting. He went in, came out and he said, Rakesh, you don't belong to Delhi. Come to Bombay. Oh. Wow. Now that started ringing in my ears mm. for the next six months. Then I left my job and came to Bombay. Wow. And that's how we got all these films that you made. 
it was half way written i thought we'll going to call it uh, interval okay <laughs> so a it's a filmy name yeah right main film banata meri film mein interval hota hai to kitab mein bhi interval nahi and yeah and ki ye meri life ka interval hai abhi aadhi picture baaki hai aadhi picture baaki hai right like i said we never know the best is yet to come also <laughs> I thank, hope so. Thank you so much, Rakesh. Always a pleasure talking to you. And you know, just hearing these anecdotes and stories, I could just go on and on. So I'm going to pick up the book and come back to you soon. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Rohit. Hope you get time to read this. Yeah.